Hello. If the stars in your astrophotography images aren't coming out super sharp, it may be that your telescope needs to be culminated. Now there's lots of videos on the interwebs that will show you how to do that, but I've learned a, a new trick. Well, new to me, it's been around for a while. Maybe you haven't heard of it either. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. I've got a couple other little tricks that I want to show you that might make this a little bit easier as well. So stay tuned. Lesson on culmination starts right now. So the traditional way to do this is to point your telescope at a bright star and then make the star very out of focus. Uh, when you do that with a telescope like this, you'll get a pattern that looks like a, a donut. And the idea is if the hole of the donut is right in the middle, then you're properly then you're properly culminated. Uh, but if the hole is a little askew, then you turn these screws until you get it into the middle. Um, and that works. That gets you about 80% of the way there. But if you really want to bring it home, uh, this is my new trick that I learned. What you need is not this. This is a Batnov mask. Maybe you've heard of it. The idea is that this is going to create diffraction spikes um, in, it, in your image. So you've got your star and it will create this X-shaped pattern. And there's a third line. And if you get that third line right in the middle of the X, then your star is properly focused but it doesn't help us with culmination. So what you need instead is this. This is called a tri-Batinov mask. And you can see the, uh, the pattern on it is a little different. So what this one does is it creates three X-shaped patterns, each with their own line in the middle. So when you get all three of the lines in the middle of the, your, the three different X's, then not only are you in focus, but you're also properly culminated. So that's pretty cool. Now I got these tri masks on a website called buckeyestargazer.net, link in the description. Um, it's uh, just a, a small business. The guy 3D prints these himself, but he's done something kind of innovative with this. This other um, regular Batnov mask that I got from farpointastro.com. Um, it's, it's always disc shaped, takes up kind of a lot of space. This, this one, look, I got, I got, I was so impressed with it. I got two, one for my regular telescope and one for my Raza. This is the Raza. Look, he's cut these little, uh, puzzle shapes into these. So you can like snap these together to form your Batnov mask. And when you're done with it, you can take them apart and it stores really nice. You could just wrap a rubber band around it, put it in a drawer someplace. It doesn't take up nearly as much room. So I really like that. I recommend it. He's, it's not a paid endorsement or anything. I just, I bought his thing. I liked it. Now I'm recommending it to you. Um, so the next question is if you've got your, your different X patterns and, and your line is not in the middle, what screws do you have to turn in which direction and how much to get it, everything lined up? So I've got a trick for that. I'm going to show you next. All right, here's the telescope and here's the Batnoff mask. And you can see that I've got these little wires here. These are for a dew heater ring that I have on this telescope. This is an accessory that I added uh, after the fact. And um, you can see that it's, it's preventing the Batnoff mask. See, it won't, it won't fit in here because the wires are in the way. So what I'm going to need to do is trim a little notch out of the Batnoff mask to accommodate those wires so that this will sit centered on the objective. So let's trim that down. So upon closer inspection, you can see I've got the wires here, but there's also this little clip here and another one here that might interfere as well. So I might need to make a couple of notches in the edge of this. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I make my notches not on this little seam. See it, it clips together like a, like little puzzle pieces. And I want to make sure that my notches don't interfere with those. So I'm going to, to put this between this seam here and this seam here, right there in the middle of that. So let's go ahead and start trimming it. Now, I guess you could use like any, any number of cutting tool you'd like. A uh, Dremel would probably work well with this. I've got this little thing, it's called a, a nibbling tool. And you just pull down on this and this little blade like just takes these little tiny bites. And so I think I can just take little bite after little bite until I get that size just the way I want it. So the way this works is you put the edge right inside that little blade. When you squeeze down on it, 
takes a little little nib. A little, little tiny nib out of there and you can just go in order and then you could go a little bit deeper and you can just trim away at it until you get it where you want it to be. All right, through the magic of editing, look at that. That's a perfect fit. I cut out extra notches for these little guys here and right around those wires. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Batnov mask. And now we're going to slew to our practice star. And let's go ahead and run the autofocus routine as well. So I've been playing with this for a little while now and I, I've got it pretty well dialed in and I want to show you the, the trick that I came up with for how to do this. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to open up a little drawing space. You could use regular paper too if you'd like. And I'm going to draw um, my, my three screws. So I've got one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little picture of what my star spikes look like. Ray that kind of comes down like this. Another ray that kind of comes like this. And another one that splits the middle like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take screw number one here. And I'm going to turn screw number one counterclockwise. So I'm gonna draw a little one and a counterclockwise arrow. And I'm going to turn screw number one uh, quite a bit, about a quarter of a turn in that direction. Now the reason I'm turning it so much is I want a very clear picture of what that did to my star. So here I'm gonna refresh the image. And what I've found is that each one of these screws will affect really two of these rays. So here you can see that it affected this one and it pushed the middle ray up. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my drawing and I'm gonna say that that middle ray came up. It did that in both directions like this. And then the other one that was affected looks like it was this ray here. That one came down. So I'm gonna put that on my drawing. This one came down. The third one wasn't really affected much at all from that. So I'm going to go ahead and put screw number one back to where it was. Now I'm going to take screw number two and I'm going to turn it counterclockwise about a quarter of a turn, just kind of repeating that same process. I'm going to jot that down in my diagram. This is screw number two and I went counterclockwise. I'm going to redraw my little picture here. Turning counterclockwise, screw number two, what does that do to my star spikes? It should be noted too that, that I am zoomed in. This is what the picture looks like all the way, you know, full view. So I'm zooming in so that I can see very clearly what's going on with this. So turning that counterclockwise, it looks like it affected this spike here and that came to the left. So let's jot that down. This one came to the left. And it looks like this one here moved up. This one moved up. So now we're gonna put that back where it was before. All right, and then we're gonna do the last one. Screw number three. We're gonna turn that one counterclockwise. And we're gonna redraw our picture here and see what it does to our spikes. So we can see that this one here has moved to the left. Let's jot that down. This one has moved to the left. And this one going in this direction has moved down. Let's go ahead and put screw number three back where it was. So for me, 
it looks like we're pretty close, but this one here needs to come down a little bit. Maybe this one in this direction could come to the right. So let's see which screw will do that. Which one of these patterns is going to affect this one and this one? That's gonna be number two. Number two will move this horizontal one and this vertical one. So if I want this horizontal-ish one to come down, that means I'm gonna to need to turn screw number two clockwise, and that will also make the vertical one go to the right. See that? If turning it clock anti-clockwise made it go up and I want it to go down, that means I'm gonna to have to turn it the other way. If turning it anti-clockwise made it go to the left, then turning it clockwise is gonna make it go to the right. I want it to go down and to the right, so I need to turn this clockwise. Screw number two. Screw number two is this guy right here. That's this guy right there. Turn it clockwise. And this is going to be just a minute amount. Just like a hair. Maybe with your telescope you need to turn it a little bit more or something, but mine seems to be exceedingly sensitive to this. You want to be careful when you're tightening. Um, if you tighten one, you want to loosen some others and you, and you want to be, you don't ever want to tighten these down all the way. You don't want them to bottom out. So you just carry on in, in that manner. If you notice two of the lines are um, slightly askew, you look at your diagram, find out which screw will adjust those two lines and you turn it in the direction uh, to get them to go where you want them to go. And you just do that until you get it dialed in as closely as you can. Here's a picture of some stars before culmination with the C8. And here's a picture after culmination. And I can definitely tell the difference between the two. The um, after culmination, it starts a little bit sh sharper. They were a little softer, a little more out of focus. Uh, and the culmination did refine it. Now my telescope wasn't too far out of culmination to begin with, so the, the, the difference is subtle. If yours is more extreme, then you're, you're gonna get even more benefit. It's a good idea to at least check your culmination from time to time. Um, some telescopes can get knocked out of culmination really easy, so you, you, you might need to, to dial yours in every time you use it. My telescope seems to stay uh, culminated pretty well. I, I can knock it around pretty good before I have to, to readjust things. But um, yeah, so check it from time to time. Just make sure it's where it needs to be. And if not, it, it doesn't take too long once you get the hang of it to, to dial things in. Your, your astrophotography images will thank you. Now most SCTs will work this way. They have the three little screws. And the Raza works the same way as well. Or so I thought. When I put my Raza specific Batnov mask on this thing and went to adjust the screws, I realized it doesn't have any screws. But it does. They're just a little hidden. So let me show you something. Come here. With a full-size camera like this, it actually blocks the culmination screws. So what you're going to have to do is, is use a smaller camera. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll just go ahead and take this one off. Now with my camera, I use this uh, convenient filter drawer. This is by a company called Starzona. Uh, it is made specifically for the rosin. It provides the exact amount of backspace that this camera needs. It's, I think, 19 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. The camera itself has 6.5 millimeters of back focus. So when we put the smaller camera on here, we want to make sure that we're using the right back focus. The filter drawer is threaded for an M48, but the Raza has an M42 on it. So I have this little uh, adapter ring, um, but I tried to get that off earlier and that has quite fused on there. Lucky for me, I did a video on how to get fused rings apart. Link in the description. So now that that is loose, I can go ahead and just remove that guy like this. Now this outer ring, you can rotate that and this uh, center adapter is, is independent. Let me show you how it works. So this retaining ring and this adapter plate are uh, two different pieces. This is a great design because once you have your camera attached on this, you can actually use this as a camera rotator and then just tighten the retaining ring down. And it comes with two different sized adapter plates depending on what size camera you got. So for, 
for me, I could use either one of these because I have two different kinds of cameras. I've got this little uh, planetary camera and I've got this other uh, tracking camera as well. I'll show you how to attach both of those. Now for my little planetary camera, I can unthread this. Recall this camera has a back focus of uh, 12 and a half millimeters already, so I'm gonna need an extra 13 millimeters. And I've got that little adapter ring right here. This is the M42. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this on. And then we'll thread this onto the adapter plate. Put our retaining ring on there and we'll thread this back onto the Raza. Add a little bit more light so you can see this more clearly. There, um, there's two sets of screws in this slot and you can rotate this, of course, to get that slot to, to expose the screws. Um, the big one is the one that's going to uh, make, make your adjustments. And then the other one is a set screw. Once you get it dialed in, you, you tighten up the, the little one uh, to kind of lock it in place so it doesn't wiggle around on you. So because this camera is much smaller, we can now access these screws and, and you'll be able to access them uh, all three all the way around. So we can use a camera this size, but we can also use a little tracking camera about this size as well. Now I can't, I don't have the right adapters to, make, to get the back focus right on this camera, but I can at least show you how to attach it. So for this one, we're gonna use the other plate that comes with the Raza with this little opening in it. Let's go ahead and take this off. Now our little tracking camera, it'll just thread right onto that. So I just attach it just like this. Once again, mount it to the uh, retaining ring like this and thread the whole thing right back on there. Again, this doesn't give me the right back spacing though. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now, if you had fun or learned something today, I hope I have earned a subscription. And don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment. I love talking to you guys. I often learn uh, new things from you and I love to turn that around and, and put it in my videos as well. So drop me a line and clear skies.